Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to create the cover for my fall journal that I've been dying to start. So what I have is I found this roll of Kona solids. I would call it a rainbow, but it's more like a fall rainbow of colors it's called Wilderness. Uh, they are two and a half inch strips and then I've got this uh, collection of batiks that are some beautiful fall colors that I thought would go great with these. Now, what I was thinking of doing was making a, uh, what do you call it, like a pla uh, plaid out of them where you weave them together. And I'm not sure if I wanna do two and a half inch strips. I'm thinking maybe if I can cut these in half to make an inch, uh, what is that, an inch and a quarter? And then like strip these down to an inch and a quarter, weave them together. And then what I have is this, it's called Peltex. It is uh, sticky, but not real sticky. It's got a glue on there that when you iron on it, it melts and adheres to it. I will attach a video from the spring that I did on a rainbow colored journal that I used this where I did patchwork of batiks and ironed it on and then stitched it. So you can see how to actually do the process. I won't be doing the process uh, on camera for this one, but if you wanna see, I will link the video on how I attached the fabric to um, the Peltex. But my main concern is trying to get this into like a plaid look where I can make that as a cover to see if it works. So, um, oh, isn't that cool? Oh, look how fun that is. It's the little fibers from there. Well, I'll have to include that somewhere in there glue that in, save that, put that in the save file. So let's, let's take this off. Okay, there we go. Oh, there's a rubber band under there too. Okay. Well, let's see what colors we want to, I definitely wanted to use Oh, there's so many pretty colors. I definitely want to use that one. I'm not sure if I want to use those. Oh, that one's pretty. I'm trying to get a... Not a, not a rainbow effect, but ooh, that green is nice. I'm trying to get, you know, a little bit of colors of each. And then one of these is going to have to be the fabric that goes on the inside. And I really like that one. So this might go on the inside that to the side. What's interesting though, um, when you have the teaks, when you go to say rip them, you've got multitude of colors. It's not just one color. So let's see if we start with, start with those and this will be the backup if I need it. But I think those five colors will be nice. So if I use those five colors, what colors do I want to go in between? Probably not any of the blues or the teal. Okay. And I'm not sure how to take this apart without totally making it come apart. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're taking it apart. Okay, so if I got a burgundy, definitely, definitely want one of these. Which side? There's the folded side. And probably one of the darker greens. We should do maybe this brighter yellow or this yellow. I like that one better. Okay. All right. So we'll try to put these back back together. I think 
things never get back together. How they come, do they? We're just going to throw a little rubber band around here. And we're going to call that close. <laughs> okay. Now, the question of the day is, will this rip down the center? And I obviously only need strips that are about 12 inches long. But I'm going to start a little longer so I can weave. So let's see. I'm going to cut the end off. I should get my pinking shear for that. Question is, where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now we'll do that. And what did I say? About 15 inches, which is to about right there. Okay. All right, so before I go and rip and snip and cut, and I'm gonna see if that rips on its own. How good did they cut these on the salvage? Because fabric, fold it in half so I know it's really half. Fabric, if it's cut on the grain, should rip straight. But if it's not, it is not gonna rip straight, so. And it is pretty close. Okay, pretty close. Probably I need to iron all these because they are definitely doing a little pull. Yeah, that should work. All right, so I'm gonna put these to the side for now and see if I can get these to rip at one and a half. And I don't see a salvage on either ends of these. sure okay they seem to have cut the salvage off on these so we're gonna have to take a wild guess that the green is running that way and I see a line okay well let's 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 cut a little bit off and see if I got it to green no, because see that's not to grain. Cut a little bit more. There we go. That was better. Okay. Alright, so now I know it's gonna be straight. And now I can cut to an inch and a half. Which is gonna be right there. I'm going to go through um, and not have you painfully watch me uh, straighten grains and rip an inch and a half pieces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rip these fabrics to get enough. I only need probably a couple strips when I'm doing these. Yeah, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. Because I'm going to these, this uh, Peltex is 9 by 12. So when I go to um, put them down, and I think I might, I 
think I might put the solids this way because I'll need fewer solids and then I'll put the these going that way so I have more but if I do it that way then I'm only have the color in the front and the back so I should probably do it this way so the front of it will have all my five strips of color and then this way will be just the few colors that I pick okay that's why I talk it out and like I said I'm gonna make it a little wider than that and then we'll iron it down and have it stick so yeah all right so I'm gonna stop the video and we will um, come back with uh, strips in hand all right I am back so I uh, just want to recap what I did earlier um, for these uh, I took the fat quarters and I cut it the long way which is the 22 inches with this the ripping and did them at an inch and a half wide and um, they ended up being, like I said, about 22 inches. What I did is, it's hard to tell, but I have fabric tacked this end onto the Peltex. Just gives it a little bit of stability so I can um, straighten these a little bit. I then, I glued them about an inch all off the Peltex. And what, after the 22 inches, I went and snipped it down to that length. So it ends up being about 15 inches, the final the 12 inch of the Peltex, about inch, two inches to three inches hanging off. So I cut those off and um, I have the strips that were uh, left off from there. So a little fun stuff. All right, so for the solid colors, uh, I had originally shown where I had taken this piece, cut it down to 15 inches and split it in half. Um, what I decided to do after that was I took the full long strips that I had and I cut them in half so the strip was this long and ripped that into the one and a half inch strips and then I ended up cutting this in half so I ended up with four strips let's see if I can find there we go I ended up with four strips of the one and a half inch wide that were a perfect length for this because they are about 11 inches so that is how we ended up doing that. So I have four of the burgundy, gold, green, orange, but I only have two of these because um, that's how I cut it, but I could get some more if I need to uh, do that. Um, and I have cut them, they were 15 originally, but I have cut them down to about the 11, 12 um, to match those. So, all right, so if you haven't seen a woven braided loomy kind of thing, um, this is what I'm going to do. So we're going to start with putting the colors going this way. And so it goes over, under, over, under, over, under. And I think I'll start, uh, I think I'll start with under. So you're going to pull every other strip out. And I think I'll start with the burgundy. Get rid of extra strings. <laughs> and I'm going to put it as close as I can without getting it overlapping same a little bit on the top a little bit on the bottom and we will just flip our strips back like that so for the next one whoop don't pull too hard we're going to fold the opposite ones back that were the unders and they're not going to be the overs and Let's see, I only have two of these, so maybe I'll do green next. No, I'll do orange next. Lighter, or, lighter, darker. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take and put the next strip. And get these, get these out of the way. Causing havoc. <laughs> Fold that over. Fold that over and fold that back over and give it a little tug to make sure they are straight. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go back to the first set that we did. 
And we are going to continue on over under over undering and switching colors between the strips. Okay, we seem to have gotten them all set. I'm gonna flip this around a little bit though because I notice this one's a little lower than I would like. We're just gonna finagle them ever so slightly. Now when I go to iron these down, I will make sure that there's no uh, white, like I see a little bit of white here, I'll make sure that it gets tucked up and do my best to do my best to not have the white show through. Yeah. So you can see why I glued that side down when I originally did it, so that when I need to um, pull and straighten these, it uh, has something to doesn't totally shift everything around like it does on the other ones. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. To just work on this side a little bit, make sure that it gets tucked in properly. It's the looser side, so when I go to iron it, I will start on this side, making sure that it all gets shifted as it goes and we'll be all set. Yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video. I'm gonna iron this down. Now the only thing I'm not sure is if I'm going to end up stitching these because uh, like under here, under this square, the orange is touching the Peltex, so that'll get glued down, but this green part that's sitting on top will not get glued down because it is not touching the Peltex. So there is a bunch of spots that when they're over a ribbon, uh, the overs are not going to be glued down, they'll be loose. I mean, not totally loose, because at some point they are glued down when they are the under. So we'll see how it feels when I get this ironed down and see if I want to go ahead and stitch it or if I am just going to leave it loose, loose and fancy free. So I will be back with an ironed top in just a moment. All right, I am back. I think it looks pretty good if I say so myself. I missed a little spot right there. But I've decided that this is going to be the front of the journal anyway, because this is a little more straight. This ended up getting a little bit wonkier. So um, this is the inside. I took those extras that I had sticking out and I have folded them in and I have touched them with the iron so that they are stuck down. Um, I didn't get too close because I didn't want to melt um, this stuff onto the iron. And there's a couple, one of the corners I had to glue down a little bit. Um, but this is going to be folded. Yep, this is going to be the front. I'll end up folding it. Um, as, as I said earlier, there are pieces that aren't, aren't glued down. But at this point, I'll probably, after I put the signature in, I'll probably put some sort of ribbon or lace or something over it just to cover this. Or maybe throw some glue on there to get that to go in there. But yeah, so I have cut a piece of big, the big batik to cover over this. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'll pause the video again and I will um, iron this part on and I will be right back with the finished piece. All right, so I have ironed the inside cover in. I have put some uh, Fabri-Tac glue around the four ends or four sides, whatever you wanna call it, because they're obviously not gonna be glued down because they're on top of the fabric that was rolled around. So all I did was lift it up a little bit on each side, added some, this bottle's almost empty, added some Fabri-Tac to the sides. Okay, you are not cooperating. Let's get this one. There we go. All right. Okay, throw some Fabri-Tac on there. And smooth it down. Yeah. Okay. So, there you have it. Not too bad. Is it perfectly straight? No. I probably should have taken more of a ruler to cut that out. Um, but it is definitely more of a uh, natural kind of look, I wish you call it. A homey kind of look. Not homely. Homey kind of look. Um, and I like it. Yeah. We'll have to just probably, said, like I said, just put a little bit of um, stuff around there. Edge it border-wise or something just to finish the edges off for things that are, you know, up like that. Or, like I said, I'm not, not too, too worried about them. We'll get this to fold in there, and yeah, I like it. Okay, well, that is going to be it for this video. I'm going to uh, save putting in the signatures, selecting the papers for another video. Uh, instead of doing them together, I almost thought I was going to do them together, but we have decided that not to do it together. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to do with that. Seems to get folded up a little bit. I'll figure that out. Don't want to cut it because it's going to leave two, two empty sides. But yeah, so I like it a lot. Well, I hope that was informative to you. And if you like the video, a thumbs up would be great. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and would like to do so, that would be awesome. Like I said, in the next video for this series, it will be a... I have... Uh, a video out already where I cut the papers for the fall journal, but I've yet to put them together with other papers uh, to select the signatures for it. So that'll be up and coming um, in the very near future. So that is going to be it for me today. Thanks again for stopping by and as usual, I hope you have a wonderful and creative day. Bye now.